A Child's Life of St. Joan of Arc by Mary E. Mannix. Chapter 7. Gauchon Weaves a Net About St. Joan. It was in January that Pierre Cauchon began to assemble his court. England, not wishing to incur the odium which might result from it, gave Cauchon a free hand in the trial, in order that it might seem that she was being tried by her own countrymen. It is notable that no Englishman appeared there. St. Joan, who still had faith in her friendly compatriots, had asked in vain that some of her judges be taken from among them. She had been in captivity nine months, during which time she had been taken from place to place, subjected to all kinds of indignities which had indeed broken her bodily strength, but not her dauntless spirit. She had been asked time and again to resume her woman's dress, but she had refused to do so because the warlike mission on which she had been sent was not yet finished. When St. Joan appeared before her judges, men skilled in the law, in politics, in statecraft, and duplicity, she did not shrink or vacillate. They saw before them a slender girl of nineteen, dressed in a page's suit of black, her short black hair framing her small, pale face, lit up by a pair of large, gray, candid eyes, fearless yet not bold long lashes falling modestly on her smooth cheeks or uplifted in firm denial of the accusations brought against her as the moments passed calm cool and undismayed meeting each subtle question with the skill of a lawyer or turning venom into harmlessness with the simplicity of a child who did not know the meaning of hypocrisy and treachery the maid founded her faith on the promises that had been made to her, her strength on the whisperings of the voices, which never deserted her in this last great battle of her life. St. Joan was tried for witchcraft, and not a single scrap of evidence was produced to show that she had ever had any dealings whatsoever with the powers of darkness. She was condemned as a witch after this mockery of a trial, which proved beyond a doubt, even to her enemies, that her soul was white as snow. Required to take an oath, she answered with great prudence, I do not know on what you wish to question me. Perhaps you will ask me about things which I ought not to tell you. And again, of my father and my mother, and of what I did after taking the road to France, willingly will I swear, but of the revelations which have come to me from God to no one will I speak, save to Charles, my king. Poor St. Joan, faithful to the last to a cowardly monarch, who never by word or deed ever again acknowledged that she had served him well. From whence do you come? they asked. Well, you know from whence I come, she replied. Nevertheless, I will tell you that Doremi is my birthplace, and I am well known there from that day. Who taught you to pray? From my father and mother I learned my potter, my Ave Maria, and my Crato. From whom else should I have learned them? And very well you know that there is not a child in Doremi who has not been taught to pray. Repeat your potter. There was a belief in those days that a witch could only say the Lord's Prayer backwards. St. Joan knew this well, and although the recitation of the Lord's Prayer in the proper manner would have been, in the minds of many, a refutation of the charge of witchcraft on her part, she refused to fall in with the purpose of her captors, and replied with great adroitness, Here is no place for the Lord's Prayer. In confession I will say it willingly. What did you learn to do in Doreme? was asked of her. St. Joan replied, All that a woman should know of household tasks I learned to do, to spin and sew, in sewing and spinning I fear no woman in rowing. From whence do your voices come? They come to me from God. Do you know if you are in the grace of God? If I am not, may God place me there. If I am, so may God keep me. I should be the saddest in all the world if I knew that I was not in the grace of God. These questions were not all asked the maid at one time, but during the different days of her trial. Once the judges tried to confuse her, speaking altogether or interrupting each other. 
fair sirs she said calmly sweeping them with her steadfast eyes one after another i pray you what have you to say of our lord the pope and who is the true pope they inquired are there two popes the maid answered adroitly and they were silent gauchon commenting on her attempted escape from the tower of beauvoir forbade her to leave the prison without permission under pain of being punished for the crime of heresy though what heresy had to do with her desire for freedom it is difficult to imagine st joan raised her head and answered him unfaltering as follows i do not accept such prohibition if ever i do escape no one shall reproach me with having broken my word to any one whoever it may be is it not lawful and natural for a prisoner to wish to escape and to try to do so did those of your party firmly believe that you were sent by god was asked of her i do not know if they believed it refer to themselves in that matter was the grave answer but even though they do not believe it yet i am sent by god once they inquired does saint margaret speak english she regarded her questioners gravely why should she speak english to me who do not understand it why should she speak english when she is not on the english side we fancy a smile must have sought the lips of some of her sober-minded accusers at this astute reply there were six public examinations at the trial as one of her jailers marcel was leading the maid from the courtroom to the prison they passed the chapel of the castle the host was in the tabernacle and st joan begged leave to kneel and adore her lord permission was granted her it was done several times a satellite of cochon d'estive more cruel even than his master once saw the incident and attacked marcel for having permitted the favor thenceforth she was not allowed the privilege and always as they reached the chapel she would inquire in a sweet low voice is not the body of our lord in the chapel and to the affirmative reply she would bend her head in adoration as she passed comforted and soothed that her god was there